superintendent of schools, and we're so pleased to have members of our community staff, our facilities review, our city council, and our team that are going to be looking at our facilities down the road, our future, what we'll know what public schools look like. Um, two members of the city, well, three members are here. Um, two are board of education members, Andrew Williams and Dennis Lopak, and Dennis is chair of this committee, it's a city committee, and Stacy Gould is the member from the city council. Uh, I'm also on there as an ex-officiator. Um, so they are looking at all the information gathered by JCJ and their team to hear what the community wants, what uh, stakeholders, everyone want, what students might want, what people see for the future of Norwich Public Schools. So I'm going to let our team introduce themselves, and I'll start with Bruce Kellogg. And Bruce Kellogg, JCJ Architecture. Uh, we have a pretty good team here tonight with us. We have Doreen Margaret from Learn, who's been involved over the years with us on, on these projects. Ken Viega, O&G Industries, and I have a couple of JCJers, Dan and Kelly, who are here to assist us. So uh, we're excited to be here to talk to you and uh, find out your thoughts. Just from a, a big picture standpoint, uh, as I said, we've been involved for past years in, in helping uh, with the next study and some other studies on, on your school systems. Um, the real purpose here today is to for us to just talk to you find out how you feel about the school system, um, give us your thoughts. We've got some toys here, we've got some sticky pads, some markers, and some really fun stuff. I've got some boards up which we're, we're going to talk about. So we really want you to feel free to tell us um, your thoughts. Um, as we go through, we're going to collectively put those thoughts together. We've already started to uh, look at your facilities, visit the schools, and all this is going to go into a, a, a master master feasibility study that will have some conclusions about uh, recommendations about where you might go in the, in the future of your facilities. So what we would thought we would do is start by talking about location. And you know, school location often influences our opinion on schools. How convenient the school is to your house. Obviously very important to walk to school, take in the bus, how long your child on a bus if they're on the bus going to school? How the, how the school is integrated into the neighborhood? You know, those are just some of the some of the things that are really important. What we're going to do is we're going to have an exercise where we want you to take those sticky pads, and if you have thoughts about this, positive or negative, thoughts about this that you think are important for us to know, I want you to write them down. Come up here and you can stick them on the board. Kelly? Sure. So things that um, are important either from a statement or a question perspective. Uh, it's important to facilitate a meet and greet of parents to support one another regarding busing. Share information to set resources to help one another. Location and parent community, so the community school is important. In other words, if there's resources nearby, then parents are able to build community a little bit easier. So for instance, one of the examples that this group talked about was the idea that you've got a soccer field right here next to Kelly, and if kids are all there playing soccer, regardless of where they're from, their parents can meet each other and um, can facilitate a sense of community. So location builds community? Mm -hmm. It can, yes, yeah. and it should. I think it's more that whatever it is that it should build community. Mm -hmm. um, children should be kept in their neighborhood and not bust throughout town. Um, another one that I think fits that same sentiment, the school is less than three minutes from my house, keep my neighborhood school, keep our neighborhood elementary schools. It is a necessity to be in the walking distance for the elementary school population. Parents need to be able to get to their children. When it is a local neighborhood school, it is a community. There's trust, there's comfort in sending students to their neighborhood, and it allows the PTOs and the school governance councils to be successful. I'm assuming you mean because if it's if it's located, they can actually get there to mm -hmm. participate? They participate, and they feel like they have a buy-in to it. They feel, my box stops are going to here. Mm -hmm. I know Mrs. Jones is doing this. 
without that, it's blank faces and nobody knows anybody and you don't you don't meet your kids' friends and classmates. You don't build relationships. You don't make connections. Mm -hmm. Okay. So neighborhood schools? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, same thing. Neighborhood schools for families um, and for people to be able to work together. Resources around the school for the community soccer field. And then this, this one here, it says the sixth grade school location, there's only one in town. So teacher's middle school is strictly sixth grade. Um, and, you know, we, we talked about elementary school being you need to have those kids close by. I mean, I'd like to hear your thoughts on once they do become sixth grader, seventh grade middle school kids, are you okay with them being further away? Because I mean, you didn't really have a choice, did we? Right, with you. <laughs> We have right. a choice have two. So if you're in seventh or eighth grade, you come here. If you're in sixth grade, you go over there. There's no. We but lost that choice a year ago. So. Okay. There's no choice. <laughs> I understand there's no choice, but I'm just I'm seeing in the future the perspective also of like the children's ages at that they, point. They they loved it. The kids loved it. I will say this year the transition has been hard on our eighth graders. It's been hard on the sixth graders especially at the sixth grade level because it's a whole new world. It's, it's everything being thrown out them at once and they weren't able to be there with their friends. They got thrown in with kids that they've never seen before. Um, or they knew maybe Johnny because they played soccer, but that was it. Um, it's led to overcrowding. It's led to more behavior issues. It led to everything we all knew was going to happen. So if we could have our two middle schools back, We'd be the happiest group of parents you've ever seen, but city voted against us last year. Uh, and then there's a question here that says, do you think there should be many school buildings or a central location for all schools? No, no, no central location. No. I was asking everybody, so let me give others an opportunity to also talk. Okay. Anybody else want to weigh in on that? Yeah, there's some many points schools. to the debate between the having one middle school and one sixth grade school is every that is centralizing those. And when you go to, like I was saying, purchase a house in the neighborhood, you research the school system. Mm -hmm. So when I bought where I bought, it was because Kelly was the middle school and Lori I was the elementary, and that's what I wanted. Mm -hmm. So now when I have my youngest going to sixth grade, he's going to travel to the other side of town. That's not ideal. That's not what we bought for. Mm -hmm. All right, anybody else weighing in on location? Yes. Can sure. I ask what the difference is between having your children go to a centralized middle school and then having children go to a centralized high school? They're not going to one central high school. Our kids have, what, 15 choices this year? But the majority go to one. No, they don't. <laughs> not, anymore. not anymore. We have too many choices. They divide themselves out and they find their friends. They go with their friends. They go where they're going to major in, in college and where they're going in the future. It's, it's like applying for college at this level. So they go from sixth grade chaos, seventh and eighth grade chaos, to now you're an adult and making adult decisions. So a central building where these kids are getting, you have your good kids getting nothing and your bad kids getting nothing and everybody falling through the cracks at this point. You make one building and you're asking for a safety issue, you're asking for no parent buy-in, and you're asking for complete chaos. You have to think that every time a child changes school, there's an insecurity factor to mm -hmm. that. So now they're not just changing schools every three years, it's a year to year and then another year. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So the insecurity just builds up every time. They, they get comfortable and now they're changing again. Not just going up a grade in the same building, but now a totally different school, different classroom than mm -hmm. they used to, just for a year. And then right. you're putting them back in another room for two years. Mm -hmm. And then you expect them to pick another school to go to to make a conscious, good decision that's going to help them for four years and hopefully carry on into their future. It's a lot to ask of a young child <laughs> because they are at fifth grade. They're children. <coughs> fifth grade, they are. They're kids. High school, I think everybody pretty I don't know too many people that maybe grew up that didn't have one centralized high school to go to. In most towns, that's how it is. We're blessed that we have many to choose from. But you're right, NFA is the primary. And even if they all did go to FA, I think that, you know, when you're 15, 14 years old, you understand that. You've gone through eighth grade, eight years of schooling, knowing 
that when I get to ninth grade, I was in Kent High School, and that's one building, one place that we all are going to go to. That's fine. I think there's a for that. Too many transitions. That's right. Too many transitions. At a terrible age. Six, seven, eight, three. Come on, everyone knows. Horrible ages. So what we hear from you is that, and there are other public, you know, community forums, and this is just one, but one notion is that being able to keep kids with the least amount of transitions at specific grade levels and schools spread around town is important to at least the group that's here tonight. Okay, got that. Moving on to talking about the importance of the things that are inside the facilities. You know, sometimes for folks, um, the size of the classrooms are important. We know that education is more interactive and collaborative now. We know that technology is part of it. Tell us what you think about specialized spaces or what should be inside schools. All right, so facilities. Different levels of importance. What do you think is important for a school facility? Classrooms, library, music rooms, playgrounds, anything like that. I think we've got these pretty well organized um, grouped. So let's see. One is a stacked library media center, a playground with outside activity and outdoor learning environments, a gymnasium, enclosed classrooms with appropriate student volume. So in other words, the way it's um, built or that should have good sound have four field walls stuff. And four wheel <laughs> 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 Really um, want wall. <laughs> so <laughs> ventilation and air conditioning is an important component. Science labs and lots of storage space. And I think we've got storage over here too. Um, consistency in every single school with the same policies, same resources, same special ed resources, and same expectations. Um, space for equipment to support students with special needs. Uh, space for support services. Places for students to play outside, exercise, and uh, run around, have an opportunity for that. Space for support for services like interventions and small group learning. Uh, timeout rooms, the level of students. So you have places for students who are high level learners and places for students who are low level learners <coughs> or have some special education needs. Uh, media center and being able to use labs so because they can't use labs because the classes are too large so I'm reading into that that a smaller class size would allow for better facilitation of that. Mm -hmm. As we discussed we have these beautiful labs that got built the last time mm -hmm. and we can't use them. Because the classrooms are kids are there's too many kids got it. Um, better accessibility for those kids who might be on crutches um, need to have some wider hallway space so that kids can maneuver because you've got a lot of kids at the middle school so it's a little crowded. For, um, put that one there. Smaller class size and textbooks that go home with the child. Uh, classrooms are crowded at the middle school. We need a smaller class size. Noise levels need to be dealt with, and they need breakout spaces. Here? Yeah. This one's got so many of them, I know. Anything else? We, there was, someone did say something about technology, but we moved that over, and we're going to do technology and specialized spaces together. Now, so this might be another opportunity to be more specific about the lab space spaces. But thinking about uh, technology and what a large role it plays now in our lives, in students' lives, um, what do you think about that role of technology? So not only from an educational perspective, but also the equipment. We heard a conversation over at this table here about access to technology after school hours and parents being able to access what it is that the students learn during the day or what homework might be. So that communication component of technology also. So we want to make sure that we capture that. So not just the 
um, hardware or software, but are, what about the uses of technology and what should that look like? And then um, as far as specialized spaces go, what do you think about integrating science labs, uh, language labs, art spaces? What should those all look like? <laughs> Technology! But um, making sure that there's access for every student, smart boards, tablets, whatever the, uh, the uh, hardware might be of the day, I imagine. Technology within the classroom should be tablets, smart boards, smart tables or pods. Access for parents to everything being done in class and interaction between teacher, student, and parent. Uh, technology, possibly one-to-one -one in terms of devices. Adequate space for everyone, including support personnel. Specialized areas. Space for project-based activity, real-world science, real-world learning, science labs, state-of-the-art arts area, music, art, drama, etc. Maximizing the technology we have, so adequate training for the teachers, students, and parents. Equity of the numbers in classes district-wide, and equity of resources. So matching up, I'm ima imagining that that also goes up to the one-to-one -to -one type of environment. Um, more cows. Uh, tablets, laptops per student, omit textbooks. Online what are we, what are cows? What are cows? Cows are the computer cards where they have all the iPads oh, in them. Uh, so more computers oh. on wheels. Computers yeah. on wheels. I was waiting for folks to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, more cows in the school. That's why she's going to lecture this year. She wants more cows. Yeah. So um, textbooks online. 40% less. Is that, we know that they cost 40% less? Is that, yes. so that related to the financing of it? Um, IT support, so Wi Fi well installed and accessible in all schools. Technology access is not the same at all the schools, so there should be more computers for all the schools. Uh, need to have more technology available for students after school and need Power School to be fully utilized. <laughs> Smartphones, smartwatch, smart TV, smart kid learning. Okay, so specialized spaces, we've got um, English as a second language, difficult for parents to help their students, so parents obviously need a little bit help as well alongside their students. Uh, families learning English programs. Similar, I assume? Yeah. Um, community programs to help the parents help the kids. So again, more support for a parent who doesn't speak English. Um, and space for that. Space for that. Uh, parents need to learn and access technology. Technology thing, but same thing. So basically, you want to understand what your kid's homework is, what the assignment is, and what's going on in the classroom. Uh, real world spaces, uh, such as a kid's kitchen, a garden area, science labs, um, distinct spaces for art and music to minimize sharing between faculty members, um, real world spaces, kitchens, industrial arts, CAD, and then emphasize very strongly on the career readiness spaces, so spaces that will help kids prepare for real life situations, um, getting out in the working world. And then language labs, they need language labs. They're not getting opportunities to use Microsoft Office programs, which is a necessity. Is that because there's cr too many Chromebooks? Not enough. Mm -hmm. There's not enough of anything for these kids to learn. Mm -hmm. And they're sharing. I mean, the teachers have to, in order to get a cow, the teachers have to sign up about a month ahead of time and know that they're going to that particular week, Mrs. Jones has it, and then Mrs. Smith has it the following week. Mm -hmm. These kids aren't getting the time to work with the programs, to do what they need to do on the programs, and even work on typing a simple paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my question, my question was though, you specifically said Microsoft Office, right? Right. So is that because what you were, what you would want? Okay. Because this is about what we would want. So what you would want is kids to have access to real life software yes. and it equitably. Yes. Okay. Did you catch it that way, Bruce? Thank you. Okay.
And also, um, the power school to be fully utilized, is that on the teacher side? Is that on the school side? On everybody's side. Everybody side. side as well. The other thing I wanted to note, too, as far as language labs go, if you look at the other towns around here, such as you know, Waterford, Rotten, Ledger, Sales School even, they start foreign languages early. And they're required in their middle schools. They do it seventh and eighth grade. So when they get up to high school and they want to go to college, most colleges are requiring three years of a language in high school. Those kids are already prepared to start their languages and it's not going to be such a struggle and they continue going into AP classes. However, if they haven't been exposed to these languages before and then they get into high school, now they're a deer in headlights. They're at a disadvantage as far as these kids from these other towns who have been exposed to these languages. So where does that place them as far as wanting to take AP classes, wanting to get into colleges and classes if they're struggling because they've never been exposed to these languages before? So from a facility standpoint, because that would be a curriculum standpoint and a resource standpoint, um, both in terms of budget and funding and certification and all that other stuff. But from a language lab standpoint, what I hear you saying is it's not only for students who might be struggling with English, but it's a place also for kids to be able to learn other languages exactly. so they are prepared later on, which goes back to the college and career readiness and careers in larger letters so we don't the ever forget that. The here didn't get a classroom until Christmas break. Okay. That's, that's just not even fair to a, to a teacher. So not what you would want, so what classrooms. you would want is classrooms for every teacher. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Or virtual. This is about what we would want. Or virtual or opportunities. For our okay. Language. Hey, Lisa. Hi. Can you write that, the virtual down on I'm a sticky note, to. please? Thank you. All right. The physical condition of schools. What would you want in, for physical conditions of schools? Right, oftentimes the physical condition of a school is seen as a commitment to its students. What do you think about the physical condition now of the schools? What do you think should be done? Um, we've heard about classrooms, we've heard about sizes of classrooms, um, too many kids in a classroom, that kind of a thing. Um, what do you think might be able to happen in order to make sure that the physical conditions of the schools are in the best shape that they can be. Hilly, you want to start? Sure. We'll start over here. Yeah, we'll, we'll start. start. Um, cafeteria, cafeterias and gym need to be updated to better facilitate your needs. I know there's a lot of mixture of schools. Some schools having a cafeteria and a gym and some having a cafeterium. Um, windows need to be replaced. They're old and clouded. Um, metal detectors at the middle school, um, marquee boards, updated at school, many boards are worn out. So that's the exterior signage. We're talking about the exterior signage. And what I hear in that and the windows is that there's inequities depending upon what school it is. So some might have new marquees and others might not. Yes. Okay. Um, acoustics are important. Are we talking about classroom or are we talking about Gathering spaces, do we know? Is that just in general? I think the group that was talking about it was all the classrooms. Like every space should okay. be, especially when you have children who might have some sensitivity to learning or hearing or things like that. Okay. Um, aesthetically pleasing needs to be inviting so children want to be there and never miss school, adequate climate control. Um, <coughs> owner. Ownership of the condition of the building so it's shared by all, the community, the families, the staff, students, and it is a student's home for seven to nine hours. And here, we have one that goes with that, which is it's a home away from home, so people need to really take pride in what it is and demonstrate pride. Yep. So put this there. And then along with that, it's uninstitutionalized the aesthetics of those older school buildings inside. They need brighter, open, more airy, um, let the sunlight in the windows, etc. So, and then we've got redistrict the middle schools to stop putting physical stress on the schools. Security, safe yet welcoming, better and safer bathrooms <coughs> in the schools. Update the bathrooms, no broken facilities, faucets, 
have doors on stalls for privacy, adult bathrooms are lacking. Um, healthy, healthy schools, sunlight, green, clean, air quality and dust, clean, bright, open, fresh air and ventilation, uh, heating and cooling issues should be taken care of, should be climate control, the physical condition of the school should be new and inviting, um, the cinder blocks are, give a cold atmosphere and sheetrock gives a better atmosphere. Did I interpret that right? around the cinder blocks. Okay. I guess so. All right, Bruce, you want to give us a, uh, a summary of everything? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it needs to be a place where it builds community and neighborhood schools are really strong. Facilities. There we go. Outdoor learning, specialized spaces. When I say HVAC, that's heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems. And then class and room size were really important. Technology. Um, access to the technology for all students. Max, key point was made, maximizing technology, technology knowledge, which, if you recall, the conversation was not just the students, but the staff have to know all about the technology, how to best use it, all that. Computers on wheels, not enough. And um, a lot of the conversation was about technology infrastructure, wireless, et cetera, so that support iPads, laptops, whatever. Specialized spaces, um, you need the spaces, particularly the ones such as kitchens, culinary, um, career rooms, career ready, CAD rooms, all those specialized spaces. Software access to all, that really probably goes back to the technology. And then classrooms for all teachers. I think the comment that was made here was teachers have, a, have to get in line for, for classrooms to teach their spaces. And then the other was virtual access for virtual teaching. Yeah, that some of these overlap with the technology conversation. And there's a physical condition. What's important to you? Acoustics, windows. Windows obviously make the building bright and light, sunlight coming in. School has to be inviting. Uh, cafeterias and auditoriums need a facelift at least. School has to be bright, open, safe, welcoming, sunlight, somebody had green on there, the green building, other opportunities to make it even greener. And again, heat, and air conditioning, HVAC, and systems controls was the last one I think I heard. So how do you control those systems? Any last parting thoughts that you want to um, share with folks? There's a big orange paper on the table. If anybody has anything, last, last parting thoughts that you want to make sure that you get down, please use that so we can separate it out from, from these. That would be really helpful. Uh, there are a couple of other community forums. Uh, there's one on the 21st. Same place, same time, same location. Um, please share that news, invite and encourage others to attend. I would tell you that if the same people come back, we would ask you to minimize your participation on the 21st um, because we will have already heard from you. So you may want to have other friends um, come instead. I want to make sure that we're hearing from everybody in the community. We'll also be doing, once this is done, we will put together a survey that will be an electronic survey that will have categories and questions so we can drill down even deeper from um, what we've gathered here tonight. We're also meeting with administrators, we're meeting with uh, city personnel, uh, and the Board of Ed and the City Council, uh, also, and the committee, the build, I'm calling it a Building Facilities Committee, I don't know what the formal name is. Uh, so we've got lots of meetings that'll be going on between now and maybe around the 10th of February is when all of that data collection um, ends. 
The uh, architects and construction management firm have already gone out. They're visiting schools. They'll probably visit again. They've taken pictures. Uh, we'll be using some of the data that was collected um, by your fabulous facilities folks already uh, in terms of blueprints and, and all of those things also. Um, I forgot to tell everybody at the beginning of this, it's my fault I should have, in the interest of full disclosure, I am a Norwich resident. My children went through the Norwich public schools. Um, they went to Uncas School, they went to Teachers Memorial. I usually have a pretty big spiel about all of that. Um, they are now old, um, so it was a while ago, but I always let, like to let no, folks know that even though I'm working with the school district, I am a city resident, I pay taxes, I do all of that stuff. Um, and I have an interest in this as well, uh, but can we remain neutral also. Uh, we'd really like to thank everybody for their time, energy, thoughts, uh, passion, which is really important uh, when it comes to making these kinds of decisions and that. So anybody have anything else that they'd like to share or last thoughts? Hey, don't forget to write stuff down on that orange paper if you have something else that you want to say.